Everybody, it's Tyler here, team number 340 Gur, and I'm here with Chris, Karma, and Jordan. And we're gonna be talking about this incredible machine here, local team here, but really a national brand in my opinion for Gur. Uh, if you check out this robot here, we're gonna be of course going through the uh, intake up and through the climber, indexer, and shooter, and they got a couple of modifications of swear modules. We'll talk about this all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So Chris, we're going to start out on the intake of your robot here. And then talk to me about how uh, from a feeder wise in there, uh, you guys have a couple set of wheels as you mentioned. Uh, what is the advantage of having like the front set here and the back set? Uh, one can grab the balls really well, but one can bring them into the center more. So basically controlling. Uh, when you're looking at the game itself on here, uh, and you're talking about your robot packaging for it, what made you choose to do like a, a drop down over bumper intake? Uh, just space compression, basically. We needed to save as much space as possible to keep in the game restrictions. Let's get moving on into your uh, pathing area, as you call. We're going to go to Karma, talking more about that, uh, and then into your shooter as well. Talk to me about uh, what you have on your robot. So obviously, with our pathing, it kind of we call it the snack because it kind of looks like a little snake. Yeah. Fun little joke with us. So obviously, we have multiple different sets of compliant wheels running through it so that we can keep our balls pinched and controlled. We have different sizes so that as it rotates through, we're not crushing it all the time. Um, we have two little bump switches on the inside to obviously keep track of where our balls are in the robot and a collar sensor in there so that if we pick up, per se, a blue ball while we're red, we can spit it right back out. Is that automated or how do you detect that it's a, like, what's the interface look like for that? So the collar sensor is actually automated. So if we show a quick little intake, it runs it right through, spits it right back out. And so that way, if we're on the red team and we pick up a blue ball, spits it right back out so we don't score points for the opposing alliance. On the uh, snack, as you call it, for the, uh, the S-curb on your robot, you guys have done this before on your bot here. Uh, but talk to me about, like, how, how does that, like, pathing work from a compression standpoint compared to just doing, like, a 90-degree turn, for example? So, for one, obviously, with a 90-degree turn, sometimes you can cause more damage to your ball, which we don't really want to do because it makes it harder to shoot score as the balls are more unpredictably damaged. As well as with our snack, it helps it keep it compressed so that we aren't literally going straight upward and it keeps us a little bit lower so we can fit under that first low bar. Let's go into your, uh, your shooter sub. You got an adjustable hood on it. Uh, and I'd love to hear more about the, uh, uh, the flywheel weight, that sort of thing too that goes into it. All right, so starting with our, obviously with our shooter, we have nice brass flywheels so that when our Falcon 500 actually spins up, we can get it up to that top speed and keep it spinning that way so that we don't lose as much force when it actually spits a ball out. And then moving to the hood, we have two racks with gears in it so that it can rotate up and down depending on how far away and we need to shoot, or we can rotate it up if we want to shoot into the low goal. From your uh, position, you said you're looking at shooting both high and low. Where is kind of your optimal spot for shooting on the field? Um, we prefer to shoot directly from the fender so that we can get right up close and still make it in so that other robots can't run into us as easily. But we can shoot from anywhere if we need to. Uh, before we get into your climbers, talk uh, about your sword drive. You guys are using a uh, West Coast products drive, but a little bit of modifications on it. So talk to me about what you got. So obviously, with it's basic a basic West Coast products Storv X, but obviously we made a few adjustments to our sensors. We have our own little rotation sensors in there. and. We switched out the shafts and our falcons, obviously, for able to be compressed as well as compatible. And then, you know, obviously running one wheel with tread, and it's, other than that, pretty simple swerve. Well, Jordan, let's wrap up on your robot talking about the uh, climber mechanism that you have. Uh, talk to me about what's gone into it and uh, how it's been working out for your team so far. So, uh, yeah, um, 
I think this is uh, pretty well for us, honestly. Um, do you want to go through the entire thing? Sure. Yeah, so it's going to come up first. It's going to grab onto that mid bar. It's going to pull it down. This um, actually, at that point, grabbed onto the bar. So now this is at a 45 degree angle. Um, and this is ready to go back up. And it connects onto the next bar and pulls it back down. Uh, that, that just on held to the other bar and it pulls it back down. It does it all over again. Um, so a few things about this is, uh, one of them is, is the, the hooks came through a lot of iterations. Um, it originally came from the Andy Mark hooks that originally came with the shooter. Um, but it came through a lot of iterations with these popping out and basically flicking out and then flicking back in um, in order to grab onto those bars. Uh, same thing with these guys as well. Uh, they have surgical tubing on them so they can, uh, they can do that flick out and then flick back in. Um, another thing with the climber is that we really had to think about um, the center of gravity because uh, the center of gravity is pretty much all over this robot, so we had a change down here where these are going to mount the pneumatics and the, the climber arms where those go, are going to mount um, to give the, the best climb for our robot. Well, 340 Gur looking uh, great here at Finger Lakes Regional, so we wish you best of luck here and, of course, uh, future competitions as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thanks so much. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.